Good morning and uh, thanks for your introduction. It's a real pleasure to be invited uh, in this conference. Working in the field of culture in the private practice in Spain is by definition being in permanent crisis, but I will rather spare you these pitiful details and speak about the much more exciting topic of conservation of uh, reused bindings. Here it is. So, fragmentology or disjecta membra are two terms referred to the recycling of material in book binding. I will explain uh, four uh, examples of conservation of this type of books that I want to group in two. In the first group, all those uh, case studies in, of the most common case of waste material, mainly documents, that are being used as part of the binding. So the, the purpose uh, of the first and second use are different and generally the contents are not connected of these two parts. For instance, we have here a parchment manuscript about laws which is later used as a hinge of a printed book about medicine. In the second group, we'll have those examples in which the purpose is the same. So a binding of a book is recycled to become the binding of a different book. Good. Strictly speaking of this jecta membra, which is literally scattered fragments, we have uh, two diverse approaches regarding the conservation treatment. The first case study is uh, an incunabula from Girona. And we see that the binding is a reused piece of parchment, a manuscript, and there are also several paper repairs uh, made of waste material. Taking a closer look at the parchment manuscript used as a binding, it looks older than the book. However, oops, sorry. <laughs> However, this data is not uh, useful in itself because uh, waste material is by definition older than, than the current use. So it can only provide us some hints regarding the location of the binding, but not the date. Good. But the end papers and paper repairs were made with a much more recent print, printed paper. And this is a really good source of information regarding dating the binding, that it can be a few centuries away from the book and maybe also located. If conservation requires disassembling these fragments, it's worth to make a digital uh, copy of, of the text. So we have an evidence of this first use of these fragments. However, many analyses will be restricted once these pieces are uh, taken back to the second use. So we might not be able to check at many other things after uh, using, using them in the book. So the digital image is only a narrow range of information and we need to bear this in mind. My preferred option, if the value of the fragment, it's uh, not individually and on its own, more important than the value of the whole book, my preferred option is to keep everything in place. So this is before conservation and after conservation. We can still see the evidences of the recycling because we see the the fragments and the repairs of the second use, let's say, 
but we have a limited access to the information of the first use. To conclude this uh, case study, a lot of work to hardly see any differences. <laughs> And this is the second study case, which is a, a 14th century manuscript from Tortosa. Again, a parchment manuscript is reused, recycled as a binding. And we can read almost all of it, but not whatever is uh, under the sewing. However, in this case, the poor condition of the, of the parchments demands an intensive consolidation of the wrapper if we expect it to protect the, the book and hold the sewing. So any such intensive treatment does not ensure that the text remains readable at the same degree after conservation. But uh, without any consolidation, the binding fails. So uh, it seems like in this case, first and second use are incompatible, finding no solution that guarantees both preservation and safe handling at the same time. So the archive asked me to separate the parchment from the book so that uh, we could properly read it. And I suggested um, rebinding with a reproduction of, this, uh, of these covers. So this is the reproduction, and this is the fragment used as the binding, aside from it. And the remnants of the sewing were also kept aside, so we can fully read and fully access the, the text of the first use, and we can see and also understand the second use better than before because the rolled sewing in parchment is now much more understandable than before. So we see many, many things now and we should be happy because we can also flip the folios of the book uh, properly without damage. But I'm not that satisfied <laughs> with the result because we don't see the book anymore. We don't see what, what, we, what we have. So uh, this treatment involved less work because we skipped the conservation of the words so that we see so many things but separately. Good, so let's compare the first and second case studies. In the first, we still see the evidences of the recycling and we have restricted access to the first use of these fragments. Whereas in the second, we have full access to all the fragments and uh, we can, let's say, read everything really nicely. But in the first case, what we see is much more straightforward to understand what it was. Whereas in the second case, our brain needs to do a much bigger effort to rebind the book again or to reconstruct whatever had been because we need to gather again all these scattered pieces. Mm. So, uh, what, what should we do? It should be as easy as valuing the, the fragments compared to the, to the whole. But it's not only about that because the conservation condition of each of the parts will distort this, uh, let's say, easy balancing. 
However, if the resources, because of the crisis, are very limited, we might have not so many options, so you don't have to worry much about it. Okay, enough, um, enough scattering. So let's get all together to a whole binding and see the examples in which the purpose of the recycling is the same. So a binding for a book is recycled as the binding for another book. And uh, I have two more examples for, for the recycling with the same purpose. Another incunabula from Girona, which at first glance didn't show much the evidences of recycling because it was so nicely done. I see the end paper matching in size, nice sewing, everything looks fantastic. But the back side shows a big gap in the, in the, between the end paper and the text block. And taking a closer look in this gap, we see some cuts in the spine and a beautiful repair of the thongs. Uh, this repair was done by a skilled bookbinder, clearly, we see here. But this repair had failed at some point and was broken. So the conservation treatment consisted in replacing this repair and we copied the technique of this uh, proficient bookbinder. We also uh, made new end bands because uh, they were also broken. And when placing the parchment covers on the text block, it was so obvious that the spine was too wide for the book. So it had belonged to another book, most likely. But we cannot just bind it like this, precisely, well, ah, sorry, <laughs> precisely because of those cuts, too much tension on the spine with all these cuts uh, involves uh, an important hazard of breakage in the spine. So what can we do to adjust this uh, bigger spine and prevent this tension in the cuts. I thought of simply adding a foam board to level this, this gap, a loose foam board just placed there. But how can we mm, fix the book into the binding with such a gap? It's not really that easy. How should we sew the end bands if the thongs and end bands have this gap? The text block shall be too loose from the, end, from the binding and fall apart. So how can we manage this? In white, you see the gap in difference of the two uses of the same binding. So the first use was for a much wider text block. And in green, you see the joint, which is the same for the two uses, and the two holes for the end band, which are the, the normal holes. So my idea was to add a third hole in inside only in one of the sides of the parchment turning of the binding. Doing this, I can sew the core of the end band inside the turning so that it's not visible neither inside or outside of the book. But the end band can be fixed on the joint and visible from the outside as it should be. It's difficult uh, really to explain such technical <laughs> details. I, maybe this is better. So we see nothing from outside and not from inside in the gap because the core is inside 
the turning of the parchment. But we do see the core where, where it used to be visible. And the foam board levels the gap so that uh, we don't distort the spine anymore. That's before conservation, and this is after. The end bands attached on the, on the top and, and tail prevent the tail block from falling apart. And most important, the recycling is even more obvious now because we don't see, we are not blinded by all those other damages. So we clearly see that there is a big gap here uh, just after the end of the book. So again, this is the binding before conservation and after. We see the effects of the conservation, but we don't see the conservation itself. You don't see the, the hole, you don't see the core of the end band in the wrong place. So to conclude uh, this conservation treatment, it's just pinning a tiny hole to stabilize the object and add a movable board to keep the binding in good shape. Good, so third study case, and now the fourth and last. This is a manuscript from Terrassa. And in this case, it was not, uh, it was clear for me from the beginning that it was a recycled binding because the recycling was not as nicely done as, as the previous. We could see many different joints uh, overlapping with each other in the spine. And after uh, unfolding the covers, there were many other evidences that uh, showed so. The duplicity of uh, joints and holes for thongs not existing in the second binding or holes for locks, many, many evidences. The problem was the lack of proficiency of the person who did this recycling. Um, a laced case vellum binding is uh, a hollow back binding, but the, the craftsman made some stitches from the choir straight to the spine, hindering the hollow back from opening normally, only on the top. And this caused many tensions and many damages in the folios. So the conservation treatment consisted in removing these uh, stitches and recovering the hollow back. As you know, uh, the board is in itself uh, a recycled uh, material. We had to do in this binding many, many, many other adjustments uh, because the lack of proficiency of the person who, who made this recycling. Uh, I don't have time to explain them now, but you have some other issues explained in this link. So after so much struggles, we got the rewards of all our efforts because inside the board, the original binding of that particular book appeared. So we got the original boards of that same book and we know that because it had the title, <laughs> the title of the book was in there. So it's the, the same binding for the same book, the previous one. It was all fragmented, as you can see. And it was not considered because of this uh, fragmentation degree to um, reuse the previous binding. So 
we just kept the binding with which the book uh, arrived to us. But uh, taking the inner boards apart so that we can check on them whenever we want. So this is before conservation and this is after conservation. After conservation, uh, the evidences of recycling are even more obvious. We see better falls in the wrong place, holes without any use, the duplicity of uh, joints. So uh, we see many other things, but you are not that much aware of all the structural modifications that the book has suffered in order, in order to, to handle it safely. So, to conclude for this particular case, lots of modifications so that you can barely see the difference. So, the less proficient, the less proficient the book binder or the recycling is, the more structural modifications shall be needed if we compare it to the previous case. Okay, so what about decision making for uh, recycled bindings as a whole? Is it the same as uh, when we are dealing with uh, this jecta membra? Not exactly. In this case, I, I would try to seek not to hide none of the evidences of neither of both uses. We don't want to really improve or um, correct uh, or hide this uh, recycling. However, as you have seen, the conservation condition commands. So we might really need to do some modifications, even if um, we are distorting this information. So in this case, rather than a matter of resources, it's a matter of creativity. Because recycling is a creative process already. Uh, binding is adjusted to a particular book with particular um, features. So it's not a standard craft, uh, crafting process. And apart from that, when they do this recycling, it's because there are already some issues, either in, in the original book or the other binding is broken because it's there. So, if the crafting process is already non-standard and very much um, creative in many ways, conservation needs to be so as well. We, I mean, there's no way to establish any protocol for decision-making in this case. Oof, that's it. So, to conclude, I want you to keep uh, these three ideas. Data to be preserved is beyond textual. So um, we, we want to keep the evidences of the recycling and we will try not to segregate the fragments whenever possible. Secondly, we need to report even more deeply than ever precisely because of these um, particularities of, of this type of bindings with first and second uses. And uh, to sum it up, uh, and as a final uh, thing, book conservation should remain invisible. We seek to see the effects of the conservation and give visibility to unnoticed features. But conservation should never blind the book for the sake of seeing many things at the same time. Conservation must be invisible, and the book is what matters. 
I want to acknowledge uh, not only the owners of the books, but all the conservators who worked on them, as well as the photographer who helped. And thank you all for your uh, attention.